Hi everyone, I'm recording this video because uh, a potential user asked me about using Cloth for parachute dynamics. Uh, so I made this very simple parachute mess. Uh, forgive me if the UE and wrap is a little bit derpy. I'm not a great modeler. I'm going to show you the wireframe mode. And as you can see, it is not too dense. It's okay for real-time simulation. It has a little bit under one thousand particles um, let me see 790 particles to be exact or vertices if you, if you prefer um, and i'm just going to click play and then go over how i made it so it runs at about 250 ish frames per second once the cloth crumples to the ground and begins self-intersecting and colliding with the with the character, you see that performance drops to about 130, 40 years, frames per second. But it looks quite nice. There's no self-intersections going on, and the cloth is perfectly still on the ground. So first thing first, I created a Novi cloth component and then made a parachute blueprint out of it um, which is basically the everything has been left at their default values the ones you get when you click generate here uh, the only two things I made was first of all I selected all the particles and then increased the particle radius I'm going to enable particle visualization uh, I increased the radius so that there would be good coverage over all the cloth surface, so self-collisions self would work uh, nicely. If we used a very small radius like so, uh, we would get a lot of uh, gaps in between particles, so since particles collide with other particles nearby, uh, the, the cloth itself would uh, intersect, so that's not a good thing to have. Uh, this is a lot better. Um, the other thing I did was select these few particles at the bottom and made a group out of them so that we can later attach this group to the character using a dynamic attachment. So that's pretty much it on the about the blueprint. Uh, now for the parachute to actually work as a parachute we need two things here. First we need to attach the parachute to the, to the character and for that we use a dynamic attachment. Uh, if we used an static attachment the guy would just fall and the parachute won't, wouldn't be uh, able to apply any forces to the character so if we did that you would see both guys falling at about the same speed. Okay, So the guy falls and then he drags the parachute with himself. Uh, so we actually want the parachute to resist the, the gravity on the guy, so we need a dynamic attachment for that, so that there's two-way coupling between the rigid body, rigid body dynamics and the cloth simulation. Um, we also need aerodynamics enabled, uh, because we want wind to uh, accumulate inside of the parachute and make, make it work as a parachute. So I also increased the drag and lift coefficients. Uh, how much you actually need to increase them depends on the mass of the reed body uh, that's attached to the parachute. In this case, it's, it's 10 kilograms. If I used 80 kilograms, uh, I would need to increase both the mass of the particles in the parachute and the drag coefficient and a little bit of the lift coefficient. I'm going to leave it to 10, make it wash. And yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to play it again for you, but this time I'm going to go to the cloth and disable self collisions. So as you can see, things still work, but the parachute crumples to the ground in a not so nice way. So we have a lot of C fighting and self intersections going on. Uh, we can disable self-collisions, but if we do so, uh, we will also need to 
uh, maybe reduce the max compression of the distance constraints a little bit. As you know by now, distance constraints are basically the edges in the mesh, which prevent particles from getting too far away from each other or too close together. So uh, I set max compression to 0 0.7 initially, which means that edges can compress to a maximum, maximum of 70%, uh, because parachute fabric is usually very silk-like and very light looking. If I set max compression to zero, all the edges will strive to, to keep their initial length. So if we now click play, you would see that with self collisions disabled and max compression to zero, the parachute looks a lot better. And when it falls to the ground, there's still some self intersection going on, but at least uh, it's not a pool in the ground. So if we had the same color for both the inside of the parachute and the outside material, uh, it would be perhaps a little bit hard to, uh, to tell that it's self-intersecting. So yeah, if you really want to get very good performance here, uh, it would be a wise idea to, to disable self-collisions. But if you do so, remember to uh, reduce the max compression so that everything still falls nicely and doesn't uh, convert into a triangle puddle in the ground. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'm going to play it one more time for you with self-collisions enabled. And I'm also going to show you the profiler. So while the guy is falling, most of the time is spent on the dynamic simulation here, the substep, which is two milliseconds, two and a half. And then collision detection is 1.3 milliseconds. Once it crumples to the ground, as you can see, it begins to take a little bit more time because we have a uh, a lot more uh, collisions being detected and also being solved in the simulation. So two and a half milliseconds for collision detection and maybe five milliseconds for simulation. Uh, of course, you can also fine tune performance by using less constrained iterations. I'm using eight distance constrained iterations, which is probably a little bit too much. And three iterations for particle collision and friction which could also be reduced to maybe one, one, and four. And as a result, we would get a little bit less time spent on simulation. So that's all for this video. See you in the next one.